On this episode of Penny's Hot Rods and Customs, I play a proctologist. Dan, better bend over those sexy muscles. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Well, this is something a little bit different today. Uh, for Dan from DD's, I think it's custom or speed shop, whatever his YouTube channel is, he has two Ford 8 inch axles that he wants to be re, uh, re drilled to a five volt pattern. They're originally four. So uh, they've been welded up. This one's been machined. Just to show you here, the center is back. The center is not in there right now. The center was just there to line it up just to grab the steady rest in there. And that way we do it. We spin it just on the bearing itself. I don't know if he's switching bearings or not. So we were a little bit careful. Sorry for the crappy light. We were a little bit careful of heat stop when we welded them. They were uh, preheated and postheated. At one time here, this shop was almost a cottage industry doing this. Our old boss used to be a dragster. He actually still holds a bunch of records because the, uh, the class is done. And I guess was retired. So all his dragster buddies, we used to do a fair amount at one point. Back in the day, this is 20 years ago, before Strange and other axles you could get cheaper. But uh, yeah, the face wasn't too bad on here. I should have maybe showed before, but it had about probably four or five thou uh, running around the face, but we just drained that out. So uh, I'll uh, probably just show a video of the other one here. Relatively straightforward. I just use a, uh, let's see, I don't know if I can get in here. Just a, it's a 332nd rad in the corner here. See if my finger gets in there. So I just basically replicate the rad. And uh, pretty straightforward to do the other side just because I don't want to get any shit in the bearing. What I'll end up doing is I'll just grab it here in the three jaw because my three jaw is good. You can see this side on the back. I bet you it's running on 15 thou right now. Generally speaking, when they did them, they were close and that's it. I mean, even look at the axle when you spin it up. They're not true. But yeah, so I'll be back in a bit. Should have pointed out that generally when we do these on the bearings that way it's going to ride in the rear end housing that way everything basically runs true i'm on the seal i just actually gave it a quick polish but it's within i don't know probably half a thou yeah so that's all that's all we do and we're just holding the steady just kind of just holds the bearing in place i just pop the center in generally generally they're relatively close you do run into some issues one time that this thing's ever tagged a curb bad we used to strain these things a fair amount we still a fair amount of axle work here but like i said the uh the days of that have kind of come to an end now but yeah, so what I'll do is I'll chuck the spigot from this side here and I'll just face the back side. It's got a fairly big rad on here, so it looks probably about, yeah, probably maybe a 3 8 rad or something. So I'll get get a bigger rad tool out. We'll have right the chuck, won't go worry about vibration. And then I can uh, cover the bearing good and then we don't got to worry about chips getting in there. Like I said, I don't know if he's reusing them. If people don't tell me, I err on the side of caution. If he wants to reuse them, that's his deal. So that's, uh, yeah, we'll get the other one set up and get it faced. Well, same thing on this one. This is axle number two. So our run out, yeah, I'll say a thousand seven inch, maybe just a thou and a bit. A little bit of rust and crap, I didn't feel clean up fully there. So it's good. Back where the seal area is, it's the same thing within probably well under half a thou. Face on this one runs out about uh, six, seven thou. Same thing. So wouldn't be surprised if it was like that from the factory. And, uh, you run into all sorts of crap or someone's tag curves over the years. I mean, there's some hits in that on this thing. So Lord knows what these things are probably from, I'm guessing the sixties or seventies. So, but yeah, so we'll get this one uh, faced and we get them flipped around and uh, on to the next. Well, here's axle number two done. So the run out there, eh. Oh, well under a thou. Let's see if I get that one in the picture here. Not too bad. You get a little bit of fluctuation. But uh, so yeah, seal area is all polished, ready to go. Same thing at the dollar one bar showing you just well within a thou. I am just chucking in a three jaw. I'm not going crazy tight on it. It's just enough just to hold it. So then the next plan is I'm going to take it home and uh, I'll do it on the uh, Bridgeport style mill and just run a chuck over on a set of boring bars. Years ago, we used to have all drill fixtures for these things made up that would spigot on here. We had different bushings that you'd pop in and out. 
and one of our managers threw all that junk out. One time we used to shorten a fair amount of rear ends here at one time too. The old four to eight, nine, especially nine inches, but uh, yeah, it's all things of the past now, but like I said, this is a, a favor for Dan there, so hopefully this weekend maybe we'll get this guy set up. I think he's only putting 716 studs in here, so I think he wants a four and three quarter pattern, so, because the issue gets to be where the old ones were before, you can get four of them in, and then the fifth one lies in the middle here, and you just don't physically have enough room to do it. So, uh, so yeah, we'll put that in. I, I gotta double check with them. I think we're doing four, five on four and three quarters, I believe is the pattern we're doing. So it'll put them out a little bit farther than original, but uh, that'll be fine. Okay, this side's face actually lied here before. The radius was only uh, an eighth inch rad. So it cleaned up pretty good. The width right now as it stands, you can see right here is weird. It was uh, low on this side, but it was low. Yeah, about a third of the way over on that side, closer to the hole. So I know when these things are done, I would assume over the years, these things are not done in pairs. Like not done similar to like a, a brake disc. So yeah, so that, that's that side done. So then uh, next step is to, uh, to drill the holes. And uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there. But um, yeah, I, I ended up taking off the, well, I mic'd it before, like I said, and it was out to lunch. Right now it's parallel within a thou, which we're gonna call good. But um, yeah, it was, uh, they ended up taking five or six thou for this face and it was about six thou, right to about there. So I don't wanna take any more. So now everything's straight, parallel, and true. So when I go to to do the um, the um, the holes here, I'll just grab right here on the seal surface. That way it ran true, so everything should run true. Dial in the spigot, make sure the face is uh, flat, and then poke the five holes in. And these will be ready to be done whenever he's going to be done. The reason I'll mention this why I hate axles so much is. Uh, like if you look at the spline right now with my center in it, this spline runs out to that center probably at least 10 thou. These things, nothing ever ran true on them. I mean, you can see how bad. They're always terrible. I hate these things. You can look at how rough the machining was on this one originally. It was all over the place on this one. So huge gouges, and most of it's cleaned out. That little bit I'm gonna leave. It's just just like a thaw under. You can see I'm just just touching the high. So but remember I said the other one, the center ran out. This one here. That one's fine. So that's like I said, I uh, I don't mind the ghetto tape job. Just saves the crap out of the bearings. But yeah, that's what I said. I hate doing axle work to tell you the honest truth, but. Anyways, this is, uh, the turning's all done. We just gotta poke uh, 10 holes in and these things can go away. Okay, well, it's cold. I don't know if you can say cold as hell on YouTube, but I will. Last night when I came home, it was my thermometer outside my garage door said 30 below, or what's that, minus 31 or 32 Celsius. So anyway, it, it honestly, at that cold, it really makes no difference. And that's without the wind chill. It's, it's cold. So we're back. Uh, Gonna drill the uh, the uh, the new bolt hole pattern on double D's axles here. Now we're just using just uh, no, he's not making a crap ton of horsepower, so we're just using a standard 716 stud here. Somebody's gonna ask, how do you do that? Is right here, right underneath the knurl is a dammer. Come on, phone focus, and it measures just about 450, 451. So I'm gonna use a 2964th drill, which measures at 453, approximately. Of course, it's the fourth decimal place. I'm not gonna worry about that. So just to show what we're gonna do here, rather than that, I'm just gonna go to the bench here. Just got a pilot hole drilled. Let's see, I'm gonna put my phone down for one second because I don't got a tripod. Hang on one second. Let's see if this will work. Probably not, but we'll see. Sorry about this, folks. A little ill prepared here. And she's going in. Like I said, it's generally when we do them, I'll actually press them in. But I mean, just to show you, it, it will go in that way. It'll be held nice and tight. The neurals, the neurals will cut into the metal because how it basically works is the neurals kind of push themselves in there. The minor diameter will slip through and the neurals will cut a path. 
So yeah, so what we got to do now is uh, I'll set this up. I forget the angle. I used to know the top of my head, but I honestly kind of forgot. But I think I'll probably go right around 45 should get it good. And then I'll just go where the center drill is to pock them in just to see exactly where I'm at. And if I have to adjust it a little bit. I do have to uh, dial the face in here just because when I move the turret out on the mill, sometimes it could be off a smidgen. I know my parallels are precision ground and checked. I checked them the other day at work there on a pink inspection stair table and they're within about two tenths of flatness and parallelism. So for a job like this, more inaccurate. So uh, yeah, next is to, uh, to tram it, dial this spigot here and uh, put five holes in. Okay, I got it in the, it's in the chuck. It's trammed in. The only issue is when you bring your turret out, especially this, the bridge ports I found, even it doesn't matter if it's a bridge port or a knockoff or where it's made, it doesn't matter. When you bring it out that much, it always has to be retrammed. So uh, I got it all within about, uh, it's within about a thou right now. So we're going to call that good. Some guys at work do this, don't bother to tram it, then they wonder why they dial it in, but then their bolt hole circle is off from where it's supposed to be because they didn't bother to retram the spindle to the actual axis of the world. So anyway, so now we know that is good. So uh, it just took a little bit of tweaking. If you look at my old cheesy the lines of zero, never trust them. But I mean, they're basically good. It was only out uh, one way. I think it was about five. That one way it was about six. So like I said, I know my parallels are good. I know this is good. So I know it's uh, it's just, we. I've done this before. I've done the mills here and the mills at work. It's the same kind of same deal. The nice thing about the Newell, I like the old, I forget what version this is. I like this, the, some of the newer ones that work, they've gone to the newer style of readouts. This one for me is more user-friendly, easy bolt tool circles. I'll show it here in a minute when I do it. So if I go to tram it, I'm sorry, not try. I go to put my bolt tool circle in and it's off a little bit where I don't like, it's just easy. I just change my, uh, my angle because it gives me a start angle. I can change it. I, I think it lets you do half degrees. I honestly can't remember, maybe even, le maybe even less. I can't remember, but for the stuff we do, we never get that fussy. But yeah, so if I, you know, I come here, I want to locate it. Oh, I'm a little bit over five degrees. I can just move it over. So yeah, so we'll get this set up and we'll get some holes drilled in. Just for the benefit of anyone with a new old readout like this, it's dead simple to a bolt hole circle. Let's see if I get in focus here. You hit F1. It'll come up to P. I don't know what the hell the P actually stands for. I can't remember. It shows I'm, I want X, Y. You can, you can jog this if you want the Z or if you want like X, Y or Y, Z or X, Z, whichever you want. And you just hit this button here. It'll tell me my starting point is zero, zero, because you can offset it if you so choose. I'm going to stick with zero, zero. And then my bolt hole circle up the top is going to be four and three quarters. We're going to do a five bolt hole circle. My A is going to be zero. That's what I was talking about. I can move any angle you want, which I might have to. We're going to have to see. And then you hit toggle one more time. And now it tells us we're on hole one. And then you just keep hitting it. It'll go hole one, hole two, hole three. Hole four, hole five, back to one. Dead simple to use. Now I do have just a little bit of a jack underneath here. Just just enough just to take the weight because I mean you do have a little bit of leverage there. So rather than have any chance of it moving, that way I know it'll work fine. Okay, this is what I was talking about. Like I'm close here, but not for me not close enough. You see the difference between here and here. So all I gotta do, now this thing's relatively smart. So we're gonna hit we're back to our or zero within four tenths. I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to go over, over, over. Now, I tried this once already at 355. Just give it a quick look. It looks like it's going to be about 360. So what you can actually do is you can either go minus 10 and I'm going to go 350 or just go 350, whichever way you want to be. So now I'll try that and see what that moves over and uh, see how close it gets. Okay, she center drill, just a small center drill, just to kind of make sure everything's good. I'm happy with the alignment there. So now what I'll do is I'll, uh, I do not have a 2964th reamer here at home. So all I'm going to do is drill uh, probably eh, either 32nd or 64th under, take a brand new 2964 drill. That'll work quite fine just for a stud. The serrations will grab just fine. So yeah, it uh, for studs, it'll work just fine. But yeah, so that's basically kind of involved with this. So I'll get uh, that in. Then the studs, we'll get them installed. And then these things can go back. And uh, I think they're going in the little kit car thing of some sort. I honestly forget. I was told, but damned if I can remember. 
But yeah, I won't show too much probably more of the machining and the setup on the other one because basically the same. The thing you got to keep in mind always is if you're going to have overhang like that, make sure you have clearance because if not, you can touch your saddle. Just make sure you have clearance. But yeah, it's a relatively straightforward job. Honestly, with the advent of aftermarket axles, this is hardly done anymore compared to what it once was. But uh, what we used to do at work, generally we see, like I said, you either do it in a boring mill or we actually had drill jigs made up that would just clamp to it, follow your drill bushings and away you go. But now, like I said, with the advent of... Uh, the aftermarket and good quality aftermarket stuff. Some good, some bad, but for the most part, good quality stuff. Not not really economically feasible to do this stuff anymore. So, But yeah, so uh, we'll get this guy done. Okay, got the uh, the five holes drilled in this guy. Used a 2964 to drill here. Like I said, I went with a 2764 um, uh, first, and then just used the 2964 to finish open it up. That is... Just fits in nice. That's a little bit of the, uh, uh, come on, dang hands. Right there, you can kind of see that little, uh, between the threads and the knurls, that's your kind of guiding part there. That just slips in nice. And like I said, then we'll just pound it in. Over the years, some guys I know just take an impact, ram them in. Some guys hit them from behind. Everyone has their personal preference. At one time, we actually had a jig. We made several of them up for some of the tractor companies that actually press all down at the same time, obviously from the other side. I'm quite well aware that that is backwards in case someone decides to point it out. This is just a show right now. I'm just waiting for someone in the comments to say, you know the stud is backwards. Almost guaranteed it'll still happen. But yeah, that just chaffer, the, I'll do the bottom ones, those hand bombing in with the hand drill. And uh, I'll probably just show a video or just a little wrap up when they're done. Someone is care to know I just use a bottle of coolant because if you put coolant out here, it's going to make a, just a mess everywhere and it's short. And I said the steel is relatively easy to machine. So that's uh, re uh, putting a new bolt hole pattern in, uh, in axles. These ones happen to be except for a 48 inch, but it really makes no difference what they're out of. But uh, yeah, it's uh, something that can be done. You know, if someone wants to run, especially these old four bolts and that, that no one really wants to run. If someone wants to run a five bolt, so... But that should just about, I'll do one more of that, but it's just about near an end. Just a side note as I set the second one up. That's why I do like using, I mean, it's, it's a little rusty. We had a bunch of problems with just stupid humidity in here this summer. And uh, just a little bit of surface rust, I gotta clean that up. But it is a decent bison, bison three jaw chuck. Pull the old one out, put the new one in, check the face, I won't bother to bore you guys with that. But it's basically, it's within a thou on the spigot. So I'm happy with that. That's especially if you're doing multiples too, not that big a deal, but if you know, you're gonna do a production, even a short production, like of eight, 10 of these or whatever you're gonna do, so much easier just to keep pounding them in. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, once you kind of get a little setup and a rhythm going, it doesn't take too long. Okay, just kind of the last steps now. You just use a good old portable cordless hand drill. Just chamfer all the backsides there. So nothing sticking up, burgles below the surface. Like I said, there's umpteen dozen ways you can put the uh, umpteen dozen ways you can put the studs in. I just always have just a tube face, so nothing gets damaged. Put your stud in. Just use a piece of brass. About uh, three hits with a good three-pound club hammer knocks them in, and then uh, yeah, you get. Uh, it looks like this. This one's all done, ready to go. The only thing, and I probably should ask them first is we ran into problems before years ago with cord modifying rims and that to, for different stuff is sometimes you just have to slightly turn that diameter down i don't want to 35 i think we had to take a 16th of an inch or something off i can't remember it's been so many years but uh worst comes worst they come back i just come in with a tool that's not a big deal to turn that down if need be but yeah so that's uh that's restudding uh old four inch eight axles from a four inch uh, or sorry a four bolt pattern to a five bolt pattern so this video will be probably up some, sometime when hopefully it's warmer. Right now it's, and if you can hear the heater in the background, it's like turned off it's like 30 below here right now. It is just friggin' cold right now. But yeah, so till the next one.